Hello, this is Pat Norris from Bethel Baptist Church in Lakeview, Arkansas. Uh, we once again are doing this video because of the coronavirus. Uh, when this is over, the video tapes will stop, but the audio tapes will continue. Uh, we are going to talk about the resurrection date today from 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to uh, talk about the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, the resurrection is mentioned at least 104 times in the New Testament. It it's, was so important that when uh, Judas was going to be replaced, having seen the resurrected Christ was one of the criteria that they used to determine who would be chosen to fill that slot. And so the resurrection was also a key point to the very first sermon that was ever preached after the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples. We find that in Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 2, we have the message that is going on. And in Acts chapter 2, verse 32, we see a very important statement. And that is this. Peter said, This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. So in that very first message, the resurrection was a key point to him talking about salvation. When the Holy Spirit filled the apostles again later on in the book of Acts, and a little bit later on in time, it states that they were filled with great power. Uh, with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's mentioned in many passages uh, about that resurrection taking place uh, and it being a key point to the salvation message. Uh, our point for this morning is this. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the key element in our confidence that we indeed have been saved by the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Let me just add that without the resurrection, we have no validation, we have no proof that Jesus actually accomplished what he said uh, he was going to accomplish and what God said he was going to accomplish. So the resurrection is super, super important. Our outline is this the fact of Christ's resurrection from verses 1 through 11. The importance of Christ's resurrection from verses 12 through 19. And the security of Christ's resurrection. Uh, we find that in verse 20 and also in verses 57 and 58. So the first point is this, the fact of Christ's resurrection. Let's, be, let's begin in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and see what it says moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also you have received wherein you stand by which also ye are saved if ye have kept in memory what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain and in other words that you've you've had a worthless experience the thing that we see here is the gospel is preached. It's received and it's stood on. And this was a proof of Jesus' resurrection. My salvation, my personal salvation experience is a proof of Jesus Christ's resurrection. Uh, my salvation proves that Jesus Christ certainly did rise from the dead, that the God the Father uh, approved it. So the gospel that without the resurrection, there is no gospel without the resurrection. The resurrection is a key element in the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. If it has changed to be of no value, if there is no resurrection, then our belief is worthless. It's of no value whatsoever. So the fact of Jesus' resurrection is super duper important again. It's and notice what it says, and I'm going to read now verses three through uh, three and four. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 
according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. We know that there's tremendous Old Testament prophecies that Jesus Christ fulfilled. Uh, in fact, Isaiah chapter 53 outlines it quite uh, wonderfully, how that Jesus Christ was going to bear the burden for the sins of Israel is what it's talking about there, but also for the sins of the whole world, which includes us, uh, as we see later on. We find this in Psalm, Psalm 16, verse 10, uh, also Daniel 9, 27, and Hosea chapter 6, and verse 2. We know that the gospel was delivered. It says that, For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Uh, let's look at Romans, look at Romans chapter 4, verse 25. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. If you have your Bibles in your living room now, and you would like to follow along, please do. Uh, Romans chapter 5, or excuse me, Romans chapter 4, verse 25. It says this, Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again, for our justification. So that tells us again that the importance of the resurrection, uh, it cannot be overstated. So what do we know? What do we know uh, that was delivered? Well, we know that Christ died for our sins in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 2. And I'm going to slip over there. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I delivered not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And of course we know that He, was, he rose again as well, but the key point here is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 53, it talks about the, our iniquity being laid on Him. He was then buried. Buried was, an, in, was a very important part of this as well because that verified his sacrifice for our sin. And if he was not buried then, and he just was wounded, uh, then it would not have fulfilled everything that it was supposed to fulfill from the Old Testament. And the third thing is as he rose again the third day. Once again, we, we can read verses 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So He rose again the third day. The Greek tense that it has here is the state thus begun, and its consequences still continue. So when He rose again, when he, was, when he died, he was buried, he rose again, the consequences still continue. And that consequence for us is the ability to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and, he, and start an eternal relationship with God. Uh, super important that we do that. So how do we know that he rose again? How do we know that? Well, he was seen. Uh, we're going to see in verse 5 that he was seen uh, and following. There's quite a number of verses that talk about it. Seen is a key to the witness of the truth. It has to be verified. There has to be witnesses that can verify what's going on. Notice what it says, in, starting with verse 5, and that he was seen of Cephas, Peter, then the twelve, Again, this is verse 6 now. And that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Notice this. Of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So many, many of those that saw Jesus Christ in the flesh were still alive when Paul wrote this. Uh, and could be gone to for verification that this truly had taken place. After that he was seen of James, the brother of Jesus, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. He saw Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ stopped him on the Damascus road and showed himself to him, showed him 
himself to him more than once. It goes on to say, For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which, would, which was with me. So what is, what is the thing about this resurrection? Why is it so important that witnesses had to be declared as Paul's writing here? Well, the resurrection is a key to salvation. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, is we will include uh, that as well. It says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it goes on to say, in verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we know that confessing that resurrection is just as important as confessing that we believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Uh, Jesus Christ was buried for our sins. And Jesus Christ was resurrected for our sins. Because that is the validation that we need. It's super important that we understand that as well. It appears super important is in, on my mind right now, and it is super important. The resurrection is the key to the Father's acceptance of the finished work of Christ. We're going to go over to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse, verses 7 through 9. Hebrews 5, 7 through 9. Who, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things that he suffered, being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. That salvation, again, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. All the witnesses verify the truth of the resurrection. We see that in, in, uh, back in 1 Corinthians once again. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We will see that in just a second. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we, and we see in, in, uh, in verse 11, Therefore, whether... It were I or they, we preach, and so we believed. They all had the same message. The same message was what they declared, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, not every, not, there isn't any other religion in the world that, had, that can claim that their, that their uh, Savior was resurrected. It's only Christianity. Every one of the witnesses preached the same thing. Christ is risen. It is not the messenger, but, it, but the message that's important. Understand again, verse 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. You believed in the resurrection. Paul is saying, when I first came to you, it's now I don't know who has told you what, but I'm telling you that this is the resurrection is just as important now as it was when I first declared it to you. And I'm saying to you this morning, or this afternoon, or evening, whenever you're watching this, that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is just as important today for salvation as it was then. Uh, really important. So the importance of Christ's resurrection. Let's now look at starting with verse 12. And let's read verses 12 through 19. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, or worthless, or empty? 
and your faith is also vain. It's worthless. It's empty. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is without value, it's worthless, it's vain. You're yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. In other words, those that have passed away, that have accepted what Jesus Christ did. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If he was not resurrected, we have no proof that he indeed paid the penalty for our sins. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so important. So no risen Christ, preaching and faith are worthless because the object of our worship would be a dead man. Everyone preaching Christ's resurrection would then be a false witness or a liar. Uh, and I certainly don't believe that to be the case. So this, it's the importance of Jesus Christ resurrection we would be still in our sins without verification of the redemption price being paid that's what would be happening right now we would be meeting for no reason we would you would be watching this for no reason everyone then who died in Christ has perished no eternal joy and fellowship with God no eternal home in heaven all of that would be just a sham. It would be a charlatan's view of life. Uh, it would be a terrible thing. But that's not where we stop. Let's look at the security in Christ's resurrection. Notice what it says in verse 20. But now, but, that is a change of, of view here, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. He's the one that was resurrected first, but all the rest of us are going to be resurrected to life as well. And what a joy that is to know. What a joy that is to know. And let, now let's go to verse, verses 57. Uh, let's go to verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to thank God every day that Jesus Christ not only died, was buried, but he was also resurrected because that gives us the proof that we need to know that Jesus Christ was not a liar. He was not a charlatan. And it's, a, it's such a joy to know that. He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he does. He gives us the victory. Uh, not long ago, I had a, on the church sign that uh, for, for us, we're in a win-win situation. If we live, we win. If we die, we win. We are victorious in Jesus Christ. We have a home in heaven reserved for us where we'll have fellowship with God forever and our Savior Jesus Christ forever. What a joy that is to know because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then, how do we respond to this? How do we respond? Well, let's look at verse 58. Therefore, because of all the arguments that we've seen previously in 1 Corinthians 15 and before that, uh, this is how we respond. Well, first, let's look at this. Therefore, my beloved brethren, Let's go about God's business is what it's going to tell us. So we need to respond to that, to that security that we have in Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Be steadfast. That, that is something where you just stand firm. It was, it's, a, it's talking about a military term here where... In a battle, the men would stand shoulder to shoulder because they were confident uh, in what they were doing and what they believed. Uh, and then, you are to remain unmovable, unmovable, where you just cannot be, you cannot be uh, uh, moved in any way. Again, you're steadfast, you're unmovable, 
No one can dissuade you from what you believe. You believe in the resurrected Jesus Christ. You believe in what he did. And just that is how we respond to the security that we have in Jesus Christ. And then it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. So that's telling me that I'm going to abound. I'm going to, and, and that abound there is it's super abound. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because of the, because I know that Jesus Christ died for my sins, because I know that he was buried for my, and after he had paid for my sins, and he had been, and he was resurrected, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I can do work for God and it's going to be meaningful. It's not going to be worthless. It's not going to be vain. It's going to be exactly what I, what I need to do. Why? Well, we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. We know that. It's, that's what it says in this verse. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not worthless. It is exactly what we need to believe for our, for our salvation to be secure. It's what we need. It's what the world needs. It's what our community needs. In this time of crisis, uh, this uh, virus that's going on, uh, one thing I have not seen is I have not seen the community turning to the Lord because of their, their, because of their fear. They're looking to the government. They're looking to every, everything else. They're looking at hoarding resources. They're looking at anything but turning to the Lord in repentance and, and being forgiven for their sin and believing in Jesus Christ. They're not doing that. Why is that? Well, because they think it's worthless. But I'm telling you today, if you're, if you're watching this today, you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's not worthless. It is meaningful. It is true. It's everything that you need in life. It's exactly what you need. So our conclusion is this. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the key element in our confidence that we indeed have been saved by the blood of Christ. Without that resurrection, we would not know. We'd be, we would certainly be believing that we, were, we are worshiping a dead man. Well, a dead man doesn't bring any confidence to me, uh, and it, I'm sure it wouldn't bring any confidence to you, but a resurrected man, the only one that it ever happened to permanently Jesus Christ did that, and what a great joy it is to know that. Knowing the facts, knowing the facts that He rose from the dead, there's witnesses that could prove it, that were still alive when Paul wrote, knowing that we are not dedicated to a lie, because we know it's not a lie, we know it's not worthless, we know it's not vain, and being secure in Christ, we can carry on with enthusiasm in the name of Christ. We can serve Him with great joy and gladness knowing that He is worth every minute of our time, every minute of our worship, every minute of our faith. Uh, he is worth it all. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He's the one that controls my life. And not only because I'm a pastor, I came to be a pastor later in life. And, but uh, even before that, Jesus Christ was the focus of my life. Spent a lot of time in church services doing many, many things. You too can know Jesus Christ as your Savior. Simply understand that He died for your sins because you needed to be forgiven. Also, also uh, we believe that He that he was buried and that he rose again, believing those things. And the key point that follows that is we allow him to be our Lord, the one that directs our lives. And that's what we need more than anything else. Uh, let me just share a couple of scriptures with you. We know that we're a sinner, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. Then Romans chapter 6, verse 23, where it says, uh, For the wages of sin is death, 
but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's a gift. It's not something that we work for. It's a gift. It's a gift. That's what, that's what makes the difference. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And then it goes on to say how we're to work for Him, because we were created, uh, and we were given a new life in Jesus Christ. So thank you so much for listening today. Let's close in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this morning or this afternoon or evening when these folks are watching this, that you'd bless them for having listened today, uh, that they would meditate on the great joy that Christians can have by the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how they can gain a relationship with Jesus Christ by accepting what he's done for us. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.